Don't touch that dial. Welcome back to the Behind the Bits podcast. I'm Scott Curtis, and for episode five, I've got Zach Boyce. He's from Chicago, and originally from my area. He's originally from the South Bend area, and he moved to Chicago as I was starting to do open mics. So we missed each other, but saw each other around a couple times when he came back into town. Uh, Really nice guy, and is making some big swings uh, in the last few months and this year, he's uh, working on recording an album, has uh, got on some bigger stages and is really uh, stepping up his game. Um, it, he gave some really excellent insight on what it's like to come from a, a smaller city like South Bend and getting to a big market, a uh, big comedy market in Chicago. Always scary, but uh, a move uh, people need to do if they want to move forward. So it was just a excellent, excellent uh, interview. I hope you get some good stuff from it. I've uh, been working on the podcast for five episodes now and i've got a couple others recorded uh would like to hear some feedback from you just talk to me please uh people are downloading i see that and uh so i know some people are listening to it so just let me know what you think uh shoot me an email at scott at the btbpc.com or hit me up on facebook or twitter instagram whatever you want uh just let me know what you think uh one of the things i feel kind of iffy about is the uh intro music i i put the intro together myself and i think it's okay but i want to know what you think it's starting to bug me every time i hear it so i don't know if i like it or not i I do appreciate you listening uh once again if you uh want want to follow us on facebook it's the behind the bits podcast and on twitter it's the btb pc and instagram it's behind the bits podcast Uh, would love to have you follow me on all those things so you know what's going on uh zach boyce was an excellent guest and i'm going to keep this short because i don't have much voice left i hope you enjoy thank you hey everybody welcome back to the behind the bits podcast this is scott curtis and i am here with zach boyce from chicago how's it going zach hey how's it going uh good to hear from you yeah so you're the first interview i've had that i actually kind of know so this is kind of nice <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> glad you can talk to a friend, you know? That's, yeah, uh, yeah. Everybody, yeah. Everybody else I've hit up are like, uh, who the hell are you be, uh, before I can finally get him to talk to me? So this, this is uh, very good. Um, <laughs> so I wanted to um, talk to you because you're, you're right at that point where you are like probably going to break out and and things are going to start happening and i want to know you know how how you got to that point um one thing i know is you you're from my hometown of south bend you lived there for quite a while and then moved to chicago uh what was it that got you started in doing comedy in the first place you know the crazy thing is i always wanted to do it i always loved it uh my dad was real into stand-up and like in uh, when I was when I was like an adolescent, like Comedy Central was kind of becoming a big thing, and they were pumping out those half hours. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know they were just on, and I'd watch them, and I'm like, that would be great, you know. Uh, but it it never seemed it never seemed like a real thing, especially in like you know I love South Bend, but I didn't you know you there were no open mics or anything, you know right. you don't you don't know any of that. There, I, this was pre-internet too. So like, it was like right when AOL, you had to put the 700 hour disc in and there were no, <laughs> there were no <laughs> message boards or anything talking about like, Oh, here's a list of open mics and all that stuff. So it was just, it was just always one of those weird dreams where you're just like, man, that would be a great job. Right. And I would, I would love to do that, but I don't even, I think you just have to already be famous or something. Uh huh. I didn't realize the back end of all of that. Right. <laughs> so when you uh, when you finally made the plunge, what I mean, what was your what was, what was the first time you got on stage like? Oh wow. Okay. So let's see. <laughs> I was. It was. I my goal was. Uh, I was in my. I was twenty. 
I was 25, first of all. And then I was like, you know what? I've always wanted to see this. I'm going to do it before my 26th birthday. Uh, and uh, oddly enough, I had moved. Um, I had moved into this apartment. And when you went out on my balcony, you could see, I saw this, there was a comedy club. Like, uh-huh. <laughs> it was just out there. And, <laughs> and, uh, and it, uh, they had a banner that said open mic and I went, Oh, that's it. Like, that's how you, so you do it. Uh-huh. And, uh, pretty much, I mean, I didn't make it. I, uh, <laughs> it was a week after my 26th birthday. I finally went up, but uh-huh. I still count it as completing that goal or whatever. But mm-hmm. I, you know, I went up and it was one of the scariest things I've ever done in my life. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was, the crazy thing is like that you have that big, everybody has a fear of it or, you know, and, uh, but once you do it, I did it once and it, it's not like it went great, but I was like, Oh, they didn't like blues brothers me and throw bottles at me. You know what right, I mean? And yeah. I'm like, Oh, so it's not, <laughs> I'm like, Oh, so that's the worst that happens. I mean, it, it wasn't the worst that would happen to me, but like, it, I was like, Oh, you, you're not going to get m- murdered, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so after that, I was like, Oh, I just have to, you just keep doing it. And yeah. then, yeah. Yeah. That's great. Did, did you do it over, um, was it the laugh comedy club that had the open mic? Yeah, it was a laugh. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and I went, uh, I went, you, I signed up the week before and the week before I went, there were like, there were like seven people there, you know, right. so I'm like, Oh, this is pretty low stakes. Like, uh-huh. I'm like this is, you know, cause I, you know, you, I, I really like comedy. I was a real nerd about it. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I read about comedians, I read their books and stuff. And so I was like, Oh, well I'm going to do terribly my first time. And only these seven people are going to see it. <laughs> and, uh, but then I signed up the week before and then the week I went, it was, it was busier than it is had it ever been it was oh wow <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it's so that that's where the fear like real i was like oh my god like there are people here watching right i don't know what was going on but uh there were an insane amount of people there uh-huh <laughs> now did you when you uh did that did you uh bring friends along or did you just go in by yourself and do it well uh my i think my girlfriend at the time came with me okay uh, and, uh, that's, I mean, that's something I learned, uh, I think a little too late, uh, that I probably should have just not said anything about doing it, uh, <laughs> yeah. until I had done it a little bit, you know, uh, but they, my, my friends and stuff were supportive, but, uh, and, but they all, a lot of my friends and family saw me very early on uh, and yeah. then, and then they're like, oh, okay, this is all right. And then, <laughs> and then there was a big gap until I could pretty much get them to come out again. Right. <laughs> uh, same thing like, with oh, me. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I took my, I took my wife to my first few mics and that's okay because she's, you know, we've been together for 37 years. So, you know, she's real yeah. with me and she'll, she'll just say, you know, you sucked or you, this was good and stuff like that. But I, um, yeah. I think it was fairly early on. I started inviting people I knew and that was, that was a pretty big mistake. You, if, if you really want to do it, uh, I, I see the people who bring their, um, five or six friends to their first open mic. And, you know, I usually, yeah. I usually think, yeah, that's probably not going to go so well unless some sort of a spark flies. And next time we see them, they're going to be by themselves. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> and then also, you know, like, uh, and then, I mean, that's, not, that's the thing about all of this. There's no, there's no real rules, but generally speak, like, uh, there's a comedian I started with, uh, Jake Wells and, he was funny right out of the gate. So mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, you bring all of your people, but there's that weird catch 22 where when you're starting, the people that run the rooms are like, bring people. Right. So you, you almost have to bring people. Yeah. Uh, so I, 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 it's hard, but ideally you, you do it kind of for a little bit until you kind of have something to say. You know? Right. Right. And then friends don't, friends and family don't understand how many times you have to say a joke before it gets funny sometimes. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, they, they don't really, 
<laughs> I mean, it because takes. You're up there just talking. Yeah, it takes so long to get a decent five minutes. Uh, you you just got to say the stuff enough times that you get the timing right, and you cut out all the crap, and and actually have something oh. funny to work with. Absolutely. <laughs> So thinking about that, so you, you probably got kind of bit by the bug when you were doing it. So I guess you were probably doing mics and, and stuff like that. Uh, one of the things I like to ask is when do you feel like you had your, your solid 10 minutes? So, you know, from the time you started to the time you had it where you had a really good, uh, tight 10 minute set. Honestly, I'd say, Hmm, that's tough. Cause I feel like, I went up. I feel like some people start and they they just they're naturally good. They're funny. They can kind of like you can just listen to them talk for ten minutes. I don't I don't feel like I had that at all. I was just <laughs> I was just nervous. I did I wasn't confident and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I say the first time I did over ten minutes was probably probably close to a year in. And then it probably took another year to have like a good solid 10 minutes. Yeah. So like, like roughly two years where I'm like, all right, I got 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. I can like yeah. confidently tell somebody if they're like, you got 10 minutes. I'm like, yeah. And really that's, that's the hard thing to explain to folks who are just starting out. They, they think you just, you're just going to jump in and you're going to write, write 10 minutes of gold and it's just going to be great. And, you know, I look back and I, I am by no means any type of a professional comic or anything like that, but I look back at the stuff I did, you know, at the beginning, which was like five years ago. And I do very little of that stuff or I totally rewrote it. And it's, it's a totally different bit now. And you just you churn through stuff and uh stuff that was okay becomes funnier and then uh stuff that you thought was okay just has to go because it's not good oh yeah and then there's also there's that thing where when you start you even you don't know and so like you know me and my peers that i started with you know we wrote a lot and you know we were all like yeah probably got like 20 minutes and Mm -hmm. then (laughs) yeah and then you go up and you're like oh i have I have one good joke. I have a piece of one good joke. I have three minutes, maybe. Uh And yeah, I'm, you know, I'm in, uh, in a couple of months, I'll be seven years. And I, I don't, I don't do any, like, I, I looked, uh, I looked recently at the, I have the very first piece of like paper with all of my first stuff on it. Uh I don't do anything remotely close to any of that. Yeah. Yeah. It usually goes away. Yeah. Yeah, it really, it's just really work. And, and the only way you can practice and the only way you can get good is to just do it in front of people. And you're going to, you're going to suck like 80% of the time in the first couple of years. <laughs> and it's just, oh, yeah. it's just, it's just what it is. So if you, if you want to be serious, you just, you just got to do the thing. And, uh, it's just like any other job. It takes a while before you get good at it. Yeah, and it's a, yeah, it's it's uh, it's the only one where you know I've heard comedians say this before. Where like if you're in a band, you can practice in your garage or your basement until you got it down. And stand up's literally the only thing where you just have to be bad in front of people mm-hmm. for a while, <laughs> unless you're lucky, you know, unless you're some phenom or wonder kind. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like a Robin Williams or something. You just walk in and explode, and everything's yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, and one, of uh, one of the things that I think that you, you probably found in South Bend, uh, when you first started was it, it's a pretty nice group of comics that, that are hanging out and you can actually talk to them and, and approach them and ask them how, uh, how my set went and get advice and stuff like that. Uh, and it's not like that everywhere. Oh yeah, the South Bend. We, I, I'm so grateful that I started there, and I started at a weird time where, um, pretty much when I started, there, you know, the old guard had kind of like there used to be a funny bone in South Bend, yeah. and uh, all of those people were still around, 
but there wasn't any real central club. So they, you know, they kind of just did bar shows and stuff Mm -hmm. so that when, you know, the drop comedy club came up and even when laugh, uh, kind of became a little more established, they were around again. And when the new people came in, they were all so cool about like, uh, they were so cool about giving advice and pointers and like, they're very supportive. It's like a real, like small city kind of vibe where there's only a handful of us, but we're all in it together. And, uh, no, but there was, it's like, there was definitely space for everybody. So there was no need for it. There wasn't, there wasn't a lot of a, like a, a mean competitive spirit to it at all. It felt like we were all a family right. honestly, that were just trying to put shows on and have fun doing it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and that's, that's been so good for me. I, I think the first mic I did was at uh, chicory and um so i think it was jim cliss and patrick fowler and yeah. it was either jason staples or mark stuck sitting at a table and there was an open chair and i went with my wife and i said those those guys look like comics i'm gonna go sit with them so i sat down and introduced yeah. myself and they they kind of looked at me i mean i was 50 when i started so you know i was a little I, I was a little older than, than those guys, a little long in the tooth. But you know, after we started yeah. talking, you know, I've been I've been in sales forever, so I can talk to just about anybody. And you know, I uh, got them talking to me, and they started giving me advice on where to go and what to do. They told me about the drop. I didn't I didn't even know about the drop at that time. And um, we, uh, you know, we we've talked and been friends ever since. So it's really cool. Yeah, I'm a, I'm very grateful for uh, mainly the drop. That was like that was the big one where it was like it was all these you know all these new comics and we and it's almost and even even the even the people that had been doing it for a while where we weren't really we weren't really bound by whatever like I feel like a lot of bigger cities and stuff have like a lot of unwritten rules, like you got to do this, you got to do that. Mm -hmm. We didn't have any of that. We were all just buddies (laughs) yeah, uh, trying to help each other out. And, uh, it, it, I'm so, you know, my first, what, three, I'm a friend of Ben and I, I, I feel extremely grateful. (laughs) Right. Yeah. I, uh, it was funny because I had been doing, you know, South Bend for, I guess a couple, three years. And I went through Nashville for work quite a bit. So I, and I stayed pretty close to Nashville. So one night, a couple, a couple, three years ago, I decided to go to one of the clubs there that was having an open mic. And I went there and I tried to talk to some of the other comics and they were just kind of like on one side of the room and I was on the other side of the room. (laughs) <laughs> they had yeah. had nothing to say and then when they yeah. br- they brought me up it, it was it, it pissed me off about more than anything it, it was about the closest i'd been to a bar fight in a long time but they they yeah. brought me up and my handwriting's not great but my name is scott curtis and the guy said scott cuntus and and i, I was so pissed i could <laughs> barely do my act <laughs> I wanted to gra- <laughs> grab the guy by the throat and just take him outside. <laughs> so that's a little different. But yeah, then it's crazy, you know. Yeah, yeah. But then last year I did a, a mic at a different room. I think it was uh, it's the Cobra Room or something like that. It's in a different part of town, and all those people were totally uh-huh. cool. And it was a totally different group of people, and they they were all really nice. Yeah, it seems, it's. I feel like when you get to the bigger cities, it, it you know you don't have just one group of comics. So then it's it's a little harder to net. It it, it, it it in essence becomes kind of clicky, and yeah. it's it's just because there's so many people, and when you have that many personalities, you know it it's naturally going to pair off in the groups. And uh, when you go to these smaller cities, with these smaller scenes, you don't have like South Bend and then there's a lot of places in Michigan like Kalamazoo or Grand Rapids or Lansing where they, you know, it's only like 30 or 40 people and they're all friends. It's it's not big enough to where there's going to be a ton of like, you know, clickishness. 
So right. usually those places are super inviting. And when I started, that was, you know, when we were in South Bend, right on the Indiana-Michigan border. So we'd drive to those small Michigan places, and it, it was just like driving to another small group. Like, all the groups were far enough apart to where we didn't feel like we were actively competing with each other. Right. So it made us all really good friends. Uh, and I, you know, it's, I, I feel very lucky. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a good place to be, uh, when you're starting out. Right. And there is a, in the South Bend area when, you know, Kalamazoo, Grand Rapids is there and even Fort Wayne, you know, there's a lot of stuff within a couple hours that you can get to Gary. Um, just, just a lot, a lot of um, cool places you can go, and it's really nice to first of all get in front of a different audience than than you had been in front of for a while, and second of all, just watching the other comics and what they do and learning from them too. Yeah, and you you know you'll see you see people like, and you're like, who you know who is this person? Like this person's amazing. Yeah, and then you know few years later you see you know you're in chicago you see him headlining and stuff you know it's like it's crazy stuff like uh it just just goes to show you like you don't know it's like you should only like there's no reason to not be friendly because you don't know (laughs) and how, how stupid would you feel if you you know you felt like you were hot stuff and uh you know, you're trying to big time these people and, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, you move or go to a, you try to move a step up and these people are, are you know, are now even over you. Yeah. And yeah. All, they're, they're going to remember when you're like, oh yeah, you didn't, you said my name wrong. You yeah. know, like you, <laughs> you disrespected me. Yeah. <laughs> I, the, I, I still get mad every every time I say that, you know, Scott Contest, just stop it. <laughs> it's, yeah, I get it. Yeah, I, uh, I, had a, I had a lot of that where it's, you know, being where I was, I was one of the few black comics. So you get a lot of, you get a lot of really bad intros. Uh, <laughs> a lot of, oh, we got, we, hey, the only black guy is up. Here we go. You yeah. know. <laughs> Make sure you got your keys and, you know, and you're like, all right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, now I'm definitely going to rob you. I don't wow. know why you would say that. <laughs> yeah. uh, that. That is just such bullshit. I, I, that's bad. But anyway, um, so you, I mean, you, you have a, a definite, um, I guess, a very personal point of view in, in your in your act and you know you know you talk about yourself you talk about your friends you, you talk about your parents and you know your nerdiness and stuff like that is is that how it started or how how did you evolve one of the things i like to try to find out is when when comics find their voice because that's one of the things everybody i've talked to so far is you got to find your voice and you got to figure out who you are yeah uh, it's i feel like I'm, even now, I'm still still figuring it out, but definitely in the beginning, it was hard. Uh, like, I don't, you know, I would. I think when you start, you you generally try to emulate the comedians you like, mm-hmm. you know. So you'll kind of write jokes like them, the people you see on TV, and you you kind of sound like them. And you may not necessarily be talking about stuff you care about, but you're like, oh, this is what I should talk about. And also, sometimes other comics will, and I don't know if this is the case for everybody, but I know when I started, I did want to talk about race, you know, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, you know, being one of the only, you know, comedians of color it, when I started, like, uh, I w- sometimes you would get like, uh, people would be like, oh, well, you know, maybe you should try and talk about other stuff. Uh, cause then you're just the comic that talks about black stuff and, you know, you don't want to get pigeonholed and, uh, and it kind of, it got in my head a little Yeah. And the, in the beginning. I kind of steered away from it because I was like, well, yeah, I don't want to just be, I want people to know that I'm a, but it was, it was the worst advice. Cause it's like, it's what I wanted to talk about. And it's something that I was, you know, it was experience. It was personal experience. Exactly. So yeah. it was like, I'm just blocking off this whole chunk of uh, 
potential material because I'm worried about what somebody thinks. And, uh, it, it took a while to get over that. And like my first jokes that were like really good, we're talking about that stuff. And I'm like, Oh, that person is, uh, the person had no idea what they're talking about. They just, I don't know if they didn't want to hear about it or whatever. And, uh, I feel like if I were to give anyone any advice, it would be literally talk about what you want to talk about and what you know. And, uh, that's, you know, that's the most, that'll get you on a track faster than anything. Uh, don't right. limit yourself to, you know, what you think like, Oh, well, I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a woman in comedy and they don't want to hear me talk about woman stuff. It's like, no, for, talk about it. You, you should talk about it. You're the only person that should be talking about right, it. Right. Right. And, and really yeah. it, it doesn't matter what the subject matter is. I mean, race has been part of comedy pretty much since it started. And if you have a fresh take on it and your own personal experience, then it's, it's different and it's a story. And, and if you can do it right, then it's just, it's worth it. And obviously that's, that's your personal experience and that's your voice. So you're going to do that better than, you know, uh, a dick joke or something like that. Exactly. Nobody, nobody can tell your story, you know? Yeah. Like, why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you talk about your life and your experience as, uh, as whoever you are? And, uh, yeah, that's, it's, it's crazy. I it, I think about it sometimes and it, I, it's crazy to me because mm-hmm. you do see, you do see newer comics and they're like, Oh, well, you know, I want people to know that I'm not, you know, just an Asian person or that I'm just, you know, somebody with a disability. And it's like, but you are that person. Yeah. That's part of you that you shouldn't, you shouldn't shut off because you're worried about what somebody else thinks. Uh, right. And if you're like the only Asian person in Napa needs and you've got a lot of good stories. So uh, go ahead and yeah. go ahead and talk about it. Yeah. And you got a lot of, you, you know, you're saying stuff that nobody else can speak to. Yeah. You're, you're almost the authority on it. And, and then, you know, and then, and I always feel a little conflicted about this, but I think in the beginning when it's like, I think we're a lot better in a better space, uh, in comedy in general now, but it used to be a lot like, you know, like, Oh, we need a black guy. So, and if you're the black guy, like you're going to get put up a lot or it's like, Oh, we need a, we need a woman on the show. Yeah. And, uh, it's like, you know, I got spots because yeah. of that. Mm-hmm. And and I think in the beginning, you know, I, it's hard because it's like, I, you know, you got to get up and get good. Uh, and generally, however you can do it, you should do it until you're at a level where you can be like, no, that's, <laughs> I don't have to do that. Right. Um, right. But people are, yeah, people, you know, I feel like some sometimes comedy draws people that are maybe a little jealous or insecure and they're going to, they're going to give you crap no matter what you do. And yep. all you can do is, um, ignore them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, and do, do your thing. Cause it, it's what the audience, it's the response from the audience that matters. So that's, that's all, yeah, exactly. all you should care about. And just for the, for the sake of, uh, everybody listening, Napanee, Indiana is very white and very Amish, just so you know. So there's just not a big Asian population there. No, Napanee. Yeah. <laughs> I think I did a, I think I did a show there in a barn, uh, on the <laughs> back of a flatbed truck. Uh, <laughs> there you go. There were horses behind <laughs> me. It was very terrifying. Um, <laughs> I think one of my jokes, I was like, I'll just hop on one of these horses and get the hell out of here you know like i'm not <laughs> i'm not i'm not messing around with you people yeah no doubt. <laughs> that's great that, that that's just hilarious so you've been you've been going for about seven years now uh have you ever how or how many times have you just wanted to quit have have you gotten low enough that you just wanted to walk away from it i feel like i've gotten close um you you i think deep down I don't think I can ever stop. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm very, it's a very compulsive, uh, drive to do this. And I don't, um, 
it's something I've always wanted to do. But there's, I mean, there's been times, especially moving to Chicago, when you're in this giant city, you know, when you're the, when you're the big fish in the small pond and then you go into the ocean, it's it's very jarring. Uh, And then you're like, oh, maybe I can't do this. You know, I've doubted Mm -hmm. myself before. Um, But, uh, yeah, I I think, uh, I don't know if I've ever had in an instance where I'm like, I'm, I might, I'm going to stop. Uh, I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. I've had hard times where I'm like, I don't know why I do this, Yeah, <laughs> but I, I don't know if I ever stopped. And also, I know, I know people that have stopped and I'm so happy for them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Cause it's a hard, it's so, yeah. it's so soul trusting sometimes. I've had, I've had people that I've started with stop and they seem so much happier and, you know, they get their nights back and healthy relationships. Yeah. They're not yeah. drinking in a bar every, <laughs> every night, you know. <laughs> and what people don't, what folks don't understand is, you know, you know, say, say you're, um, doing, um, a feature act and you're, you're going around and you're, you're, you're driving, you know, three or four hours to do the feature set and uh maybe you're coming home because you can't afford a hotel and the real reality of that is almost everybody is working a full-time job in addition to that yeah and oh absolutely and that's the, i mean that's what i respect a lot because I, I I'm obviously I'm not going to do that. Uh, but the, what I see comics doing, you know, some of the guys around here, um, I mean, yeah. they're all working full-time jobs or they're, they're getting sets in Chicago, Kalamazoo, Grand Rapids, wherever, Fort Wayne, and just working yeah. all weekend and then going back to work and doing it again. And a lot of folks don't understand that, you know, you're, you're putting in between, between your job and driving and writing and performing, you know, it's a 70 hour work week for you. Yeah. Imagine, imagine having two jobs and one of them, you just get no, you lose money. Like yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy. You know, you imagine if you had a 50 hour a week job and you didn't make any money from it Yeah, and it pissed off your significant other, yeah. you know, like just imagine like, when I, you know, I remember I used to drive from South Bend to Chicago every Wednesday after working a 14 hour shift. Wow. Uh, yeah. And then, and I'd be here all night just to do open, like mm-hmm. just to go up for three and a half minutes at a time, yeah. you know? And, uh, it, it, that's what it takes. Uh, mm-hmm. there's a comedian in Michigan, uh, his name's Robert Jenkins. And he said my favorite thing where he's like, if you really want to do stand up, he's like, if he's like, if you're really going for it, he's like something, something in your life has to give. Like, yeah. he's like, you're going to lose something else. Uh, he said, for me, it's sleep. He's like, I don't, he's like, I don't, I don't, I don't get enough sleep at all. Like, <laughs> yeah. he's like, that's just out of the window for me. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I think that's true. Like if you're, but I think there's various levels to it. I don't, I, I think it's fine if you just, if you do it as a hobby, if you just go to the open mic every Tuesday, you're just as valuable to that, to that group of comics than the people that are driving to Grand Rapids and driving, you know, like you do it however much you want to do it. I don't right. think there's any way, there's nothing wrong with that. Right. But if you want to, if you want to do it and you want that to be your job, that's a different, that's a, that's a different set of, of, skills that you need to develop and that is just oh, doing it i mean i yeah. i talked to tom dreesen was my first interview and you know when he drove out to la he was just living in his car um because yeah. he didn't have any money and he all he had to do were the sets at the comedy store and that that's all he had and and yeah. and uh you know fortunately it worked out for him but i think it was a it was a couple, three months that he was just living in his car, doing his sets and finally, finally getting what he wanted. And that was getting on the Carson show. Yeah. I don't, I mean, I know comics here that they live in their car Yeah, and they have a job and they have a gym membership where, (laughs) where that's where they shower every day. Yeah. 
That, that, that's actually a good idea. I, I wish that was around when I was a kid. Yeah, you get, you get a gym membership. You sleep in your car, and yeah. you know you eat McChickens for six months. You know? Yeah, I know people. <laughs> <laughs> now that's not healthy. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Yeah, they they might be giving up a little too much stuff to do comedy. Yeah, uh, yeah. but <laughs> yeah. I do respect it. Now, at one point, I, it, I think this may have been when you were still in South Bend, but uh, we had a we've got a comedy club here called the drop and you were, um, part, you, you got into ownership of that club. Is that were were you still in South Bend or were you in Chicago at the time? I was in South Bend. Okay. I wasn't even a year into doing stand up. Okay. <laughs> and you got the, the is, group, the group you were in, that was you. And, uh, was it you and Jake and who else? Yeah, it was me, Jake Wells, uh, Jonathan is on friend, J- Daniel Janicki, uh, Ben Connellan and Brad Omen. Okay. We were all brand new comics. And uh, the uh, he had been doing it for a couple of years. And at, at the point where he was ready to, you know, he's like, I got a family and stuff, and I'm running this business that doesn't, you know, it takes all this time. And, yeah. you know, I can't do it, you know. And we had we had just started, and we had grown to love the drop so much. Like we were like, this is our spot. Like yeah. if we lose this, we have nothing here. Um, so he reached out to John on Baldazon and was like, "Would you want to take it over?" Because John had just started, and he was making moves. He was he really dove in deep. He was booking shows and all this, and uh, and John was like, "Yeah," and you know, I think thanks you should bring some people on because it's not something to be done alone uh, because it's a lot of work. Right. And John just reached out to all of us. He reached out to me and was like, who else should I bring on? And, you know, we basically picked four more people that we thought would be fit to run it. And we all ran for a few years and it was a very, uh, very valuable learning experience. Right. Right. And, and just so people know, the, the drop is part of a, a restaurant. The do drop has been there for, I think since the fifties and it was built, built on and it's a comedy club that's off to the side of it. And, and I think it's probably, um, max, probably 60, 70 seater. If you take all the tables out and, um, you take this, all the tables out and put nothing in the chairs that fits 103 people. Okay, 103, cool. Yeah. I was I saw I um that. I saw Haywood Banks <laughs> and I Haywood Banks there um last year and I think that it was pretty full then, but I didn't didn't count people. Yeah, yeah. So so one of the things, you know, since you were you were you got into the point where not only are you fairly new at doing stand up, but now you're at a point where you're actually talking to other comics and booking them. Uh, the one of the things that I think a lot of comics don't know is what they need to get booked um, and yeah. how, how to act um, to the booker when you're talking to them. <laughs> Um, oh yeah. I mean, do you have, do you have any examples of people who did really well and people who were just like dead to you after you, you talked to them? I mean, see, um, when it comes to the drop, uh, we were lucky, um, in the ability of us having the ability to book people. Um, and we were comedians. I feel like we were comedians first and then we just happened to run this club. Um, so we, our booking procedures were, um, we went out and saw a lot of people just do shows Mm -hmm. and we'd meet these people. And, uh, it, uh, you know, we only booked nice people. Like we only booked people that were, professional and serious about it and people that were um people that really gave off the sense that uh they would uh appreciate being able to do a weekend and it wouldn't like because we like it's like we didn't even book ourselves to feature our headline for until our, basically the end of our tenures there because mm-hmm. you know as comics are like well yeah we don't have we don't have 45 minutes to you know, 
yeah. out there. Like I wouldn't look <laughs> me right now. And, uh, <laughs> and, um, so I think, I think there's very, there might be one or two people who we like maybe took a chance on and they ended up being jerks. Yeah. Like <laughs> rude about, you know, rude about getting paid and stuff and trying to, you know, squeeze more money out of like, but generally speaking, I'd say 99.5% of the people we booked were cool people, great that, you know, some of these people now you're seeing them on comedy central, you know, mm-hmm. like they're writing for some of the biggest shows on TV. Um, I'm really proud of the people we get, we got up at that club. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really impressed by how nice and professional most good comedians are. Like mm-hmm. they're just, those usually, those things usually go hand in hand. Like, <laughs> right, right. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I, I mentioned that because, um, Jim, who's one of the owners now, one of the conversations I had with him is, uh, when I was talking about doing this podcast, he said, he said, you need, you need to do a episode just about, um, how, how, how to act when you're trying to book yourself. So I think there, I, yeah. I think first of all, the drop's getting pretty popular right now. There, there's some buzz around it. And so they're getting more people, um, yeah. approaching them instead of, uh, you going out and trying, trying to get people in. So it's, uh, it's, a uh, it's a different situation, but I, I just know that, uh, he talked about one dude that, uh, uh, sent a message to him and, uh, it's like, uh, I'm really good. This is my final message to you. Um, uh, if you don't, uh, book me, you don't know what talent is, something like that. <laughs> And it's like, okay, you're never going to be on the show. <laughs> anyway, you know, one, one of the things that, that is important for people to know is to be, you know, kind and respectful when you're trying to book yourself and, uh, always just, just be nice. Um, like, like you should be to everybody and, uh, that'll go a long ways into getting booked. And when somebody says you're not ready yet, just get more ready. Don't, don't get pissed off. Yeah. And then a lot of it is, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, be nice. There's no reason to not be nice. It's like you can be an asshole if you want, but there's a there's a thousand people in line that are nice and just as good as you. Yeah. So why would you pick a jerk? You know. Yeah. There's no reason to not be nice and professional. And also, you you shouldn't take it personal if you don't. Like I said, there's a thousand. There's so many comedians right now. There's so many good comedians. There's so many comedians that. uh you know, deserve a shot. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not always, not always cause you're not ready. It might, it might be the, the people that are booking are ready for you. Like they just, they don't have the space for you. You know, you, you look at the drop and it's, you know, do a show pretty much every weekend and, you know, taking off holidays and stuff, but it's mm-hmm. probably like what 40, you get 45 weekends. So that's 45 people you can book the headline. And maybe, you know, maybe a little more than that to feature if you're, you know, picking different features for different days. Yeah. And, you know, that's not a lot of people. I, you know, I know I'm going to go see 50 comedians today at an open mic. Like that's, Mm. that's a whole year at the shop, you know, and then that's one open mic. There's thousands and thousands of comedians. Right. So it's like, you just, you, you stay nice the whole time. You keep working on it, keep getting better, keep being respectful. And if, you know, if you just keep doing that, you will get booked. Like yeah. you'll, people will put you up. Yeah. People notice. And, and the funny thing is, is, uh, they, they have to have a variety of comics in order to, a variety of types of comics in order to, um, get different audiences in. And you just may not be the type they want, uh, for, for, this coming uh weekend or the next few coming weekends i mean you know you can't do yeah. you can't do six weekends of prop comics and uh actually you probably shouldn't do any but uh you you can't you can't do that yeah, yeah you can't <laughs> yeah. and that's and that goes back to uh talking about what you know and being yourself because if you're yourself you're you're not put in any box and uh you you get as close to that as you can and it'll be easy to get booked because there's nobody that can book like you. Right. But yeah, they, you do have to mix it up. It, 
it makes for better shows. Yeah. You have to do that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So after, um, after you were managing and had some ownership in the drop for a while, you decided to move to Chicago. Uh, so what was that like? So, yeah, you know, we'd been in South, you know, I started comedy in South then and fell into the drop pretty early and, uh, we'd been doing it for a few years and, you know, I always knew that I would have to go somewhere else if I wanted to keep doing this at a level that I wanted to do it at. And, uh, we eventually just like me and a couple other of the drop owners, you know, were like, I think it's time to go, you know, we were, the drop was pretty much the only game in town. And, uh, we spent a lot of time running that and we'd get out when we could, but we need, we need, we needed more. And, uh, yeah, so in 2016, we, you know, we packed up and we moved to Chicago. And, uh, I mean, it was scary. I, you know, I've never lived anywhere else. I've never lived outside of South Bend or Mishawaka. Mm-hmm. So it was, that was my first big move. Um, so it was real scary. Uh, but I, I'm so happy I did it, you know. Right. Uh, and, you know, and also moving to a big city in, you know, in, you know, we booked a lot from Chicago. So like it was very jarring to be doing open mics, uh, where you, you know, you're doing four minutes and the person right before you is somebody you booked for, you know, yeah. I'm like you're a, <laughs> you're a professional comedian and you're in line with me. I don't understand. Mm-hmm. And it's a little, it's a little daunting. Uh, it was a little, it was hard at first. Yeah. Um, but you adjust, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's and uh, I I know that things have gone well for you. I, I mean, it was just uh, this last week. Uh, you are part of the comedians you should know um, show, and you you know that's that started out with two hundred people. Is that right? Yeah, they did. Uh, they did this giant audition uh, where they did these three humongous open mics. People did four or three minutes and they went through like 200 comedians uh-huh. and, uh, I, you know, they, they I'm one of, they narrowed, they whittled it down to about 24 and I was one of those people. Um, and then I think from that they'll, uh, they're going to see who they're going to put on this year. And I'm, I'm not, I don't know who that is yet, but mm-hmm. I've, I'm extremely flattered of that. Uh, and it's, it's very, uh, vindicating that, I'm good enough to do what I think is the best show in the city. You know? Right. I mean, that is just, that's a huge move and, you know, obviously a testament to all the work you've put in and, uh, it took, took about six or seven years, didn't it? Yeah. And yeah. it took me, you know, <laughs> it took me seven years. Yeah. And then, you know, it, it, it's, you know, I know comics that did comedians used to know two years in. And it's just how it works. Yeah. But it, it, I, I'm, I'm happy for those comics. I'm glad they didn't have to, you know, they didn't have to sit through, um, some very nightmarish open mics. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, you know, they, I feel like a lot of people get bitter or whatever, but I, you know, I'm, I've loved comedy since I was a 10 year old. So I like when people are good and I get to see them go up and do more and get better. Right. Um, and I just, I'm happy that I'm, I'm even, you know, approaching where people I really admire have been. Mm-hmm. Um, I, it's, it's very, it's nice. <laughs> right. Right. And I think you're, I, I, I really appreciate the way you approach your peers. And, and this is something, you know, I don't ever, you know, it's always going to be a hobby for me, but for you, it's, it's your vocation. This is what you want to do. And you can sit back and appreciate when somebody does well. And I, that, you know, that type of thing, it, it just, that makes you more of a giving person, obviously, and, uh, having some empathy and, and just caring about people, but, uh, being excited when people do well is, is it, it's, it's hard because as, 
comics were, you know, we're all a little broken anyway. And it's, it's 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 hard to yeah. it's hard to be happy when you see 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 somebody passing you up. But um, it's really it, if you can do that and be truly happy for them, I think that that makes life easier, and you don't get ulcers and stuff like that. Yeah, and you, you know this is another thing that I feel like uh, newer comics don't realize. You know, we took the drop over. We were even a year in. Um, some of my I think, especially in the beginning, it's just as important to watch professionals do it yep. than it is as it is to like go up. Yeah, and that's I think you know with the people running the drop, you know, the reason we all like jumped in the, I think ability so quickly was we were there every weekend watching people that get paid to do comedy yep. do comedy. Yeah, we I mean these people were we're getting a master class on what you need to do to headline and like what it takes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, at the drop, even now, you know, like it's comics get in free. Uh, so yeah. I hope, I hope all those new comics are utilizing, uh, that valuable pool of information. It, it, it will do you wonders. Yes, exactly. And you should, yeah. And like you said, you should, you should like watching you, you know, yeah. you should like, uh, seeing good comedy. So. Mm-hmm. The only thing that's a little bit different when you're when you're watching and trying to learn is it's a little bit harder to be in the moment because you're <laughs> you're grabbing oh, yeah. your phone and taking notes. Hey, that was really good, and the way they transitioned or whatever. Uh, we went to yeah. see uh, Nathan McIntosh in Grand Rapids uh, this last weekend, and I was totally uh-huh. able to be in the moment, mostly because I'd been drinking all day and I wasn't thinking too much, and he just cracked me up. So it was <laughs> that was a good show. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I think when you do it, you kind of, you know, it's hard to appreciate it as an audience member. You're like, oh yeah, that's funny, and yeah. you're like, yeah, well, you should just laugh. And you yeah. know, what do you do? <laughs> laugh? They like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, def- <laughs> definitely take that time to laugh because that's what they're looking for, for sure. Yeah. Um, I, I also know that you are um, starting to record your uh, first comedy album, CD, whatever you want to call it. How's that going for you? Um, yeah, it's uh, it's been a very it's a learning experience. Uh, it's a lot of it's a lot of work. Like you, you know. It, even like, cause you think about like, so when you want to get booked, you need like a good clip mm-hmm. to send to bookers. Like that's hard to do. That's hard to put all the stars to align. Like you got the camera working, you got a good audience, a good show and you get a good intro and you get to go up and you have a good set. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of things for a five minute clip. Yeah. And so now I'm trying to do that for 45, a 45 minute piece of material. Right. <laughs> and, um, I started doing it. I was, you know, I was hoping, I was hoping when I, I just had on the drop a couple of weeks ago, I was like, Oh, I, I'll have three shows to do it. And, uh, I ended up only having one viable part of one of the shows where it, uh, where I got anything. So uh, yeah, I'm going to have to do some, I'm going to have to do some more shows and stuff and, uh, really piece it together. But it's, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm doing it. I've been, I've always wanted to do it. So I'm just going to do it. (laughs) Yeah. And I, uh, I, I look back uh, at some of the, the first, the first recordings of uh, some of the comics I like. And, you know, when you do that, you've, you've got something to look back on and compare it to and, and all that kind of stuff. And and also get your name out there. So that's, you know, but I know just from, you know, I, I did another podcast for a while. I know how much work it goes into editing and finding what you want. And, you know, the, yeah. I, I love this part of doing a podcast where I talk to people, the editing, the uploading, the uh, promoting, all that other crap. I, I, I'd rather not have to do, but, you know, you got to do what yeah. you got to do. That way yeah. I can, that I way emotions. I can talk to more people like you. So that yeah. it makes it worth it. <laughs> Oh, well, that's very sweet. I, yeah, yeah. I think most comedians are like that. We're yeah. like, we just want to do comedy. Yeah. You know? we're, yeah. we're make, maybe we're a little lazy in nature. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I just want to go up and talk for an hour and then I have to pay my rent. No doubt. <laughs> 
Well, um, Zach, I really appreciate you being on the show. Um, a, lo- a lot, a lot of good info for people who are getting into comedy. And, you know, I, I, I just wish you the best because, uh, you know, you're, you're nice. You know, you, you did a show that I was putting on and barely even knew me and, uh, just said yes. So, you know, I, I appreciate that. Well, thank you. I'm, it's been, it's been a pleasure. I really love to doing your show. Uh, I think this is a really cool thing you're doing for people that are starting. You know, I, I, I didn't have stuff like this when I started. So right. like, you're doing the Lord's work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's a million comedy podcasts. I just want this one to be special. So you know, I, I'm hoping to create a community and not just, not just a podcast so that we can, uh, you know, get together and chat and talk about the business and stuff like that. So that's, that's the hope yeah. for it. Yeah. Well, great. Well, I want you to have a great rest of your day and, um, everybody look for Zach Boyce, uh, at, uh, clubs near you. Um, I know that, uh, he's, uh, performing a lot in Chicago, but, uh, I know you do a little bit of traveling too. So I wish you the best and thanks for uh, being on the show. Yeah. Thanks for having me. All right.